TV, a vision for the future. Coming up, we put the focus on the neighborhood of South Bethlehem, 150 years after its founding. It's a neighborhood created after the Civil War and rooted in the American Industrial Revolution. We'll trace its roots to 1865 and explore the pivotal points in South Bethlehem's past. Then we take you to Social Still, one of the newest additions to the landscape. The region's first distillery serves up craft liquors with a taste of history. These stories, plus we welcome special guest Bethlehem Mayor Robert Donchez to explore 150 years in South Bethlehem, right now on Focus. Focus showcases the people, places, and issues that matter to you. Everybody has a story. These are the stories that uplift and inspire right here in your neighborhood. Focus on what matters. You never know what you're going to see when you tune into Focus. Support for Focus is provided by Univest. Banking. Insurance. Investments. Fellowship Community. Continuing care with spirit. And by viewers like you. Thank you. I'm Laura McHugh. Thank you for joining us as we explore 150 years in South Bethlehem. Founded in 1865 and later merged with the city of Bethlehem in 1917, it remains one of the most eclectic neighborhoods in the region. Home to a distinguished university, a community college campus, a casino, and multiple art centers, the story of South Bethlehem is rich in both diversity and industry. Focus reporter Grover Silcox researched this piece of local history and joins us with more. Grover? Thanks, Laura. Although it's been part of the city of Bethlehem for almost 100 years, in many ways, South Bethlehem has retained its own complexion, personality, architecture, business atmosphere, and sense of place. It's rich in ethnic diversity, culture, and customs. It was home to one of the world's most powerful companies and is home to Lehigh University, among the top universities in the nation. The more I learned about the people and history of South Bethlehem, the more I wanted to know. Welcome to South Bethlehem. It grew up along the banks of the Lehigh River. In the distance, homes dot the side of South Mountain. They appeared there in ever-increasing numbers as people migrated here starting in 1861. I think it's the interesting part of Bethlehem because that's where all the immigrants came. Here, hardworking men and women carved out a life in iron and steel. You had more diversity in South Bethlehem than you practically had anywhere else in the country. They came to work for Asa Packer's Bethlehem Iron Company under the direction of his protege, Robert Sayre, and his engineering genius, John Fritz. Here is where the Industrial Revolution in America first reached full flowering in the building of this great steel plant. The iron workers fired up the furnaces with coal from mock chunk. They shaped molten iron into quality rails for Packer's Lehigh Valley Railroad and even the Union Army during the Civil War. Lots of other industries came in associated with, with iron, iron fabricating companies, cigar making, later on silk mills. It was like maybe one of the first industrial parks. <laughs> As industry grew, so did the community around it. By August of 1865, petitions were made to incorporate the borough of South Bethlehem. It became a borough on August 21st, 1865. 48 years later, it would merge with the North Side and become part of the city of Bethlehem. Also in 1865, Asa Packer founded another South Bethlehem institution, Lehigh University. What Packer did, the Episcopal church at that time really had some of the most highly educated men in America and uh, a lot of them had important jobs in academia so he kind of turned over the founding of the university to the to the church people who devised a curriculum and really did all the work. In 1872 Packer helped found St. Luke's Hospital in Fountain Hill just west of Wyandotte Street. The founding of St. Luke's in 1872 was really in response to industrial accidents. Primarily accidents on the railroads and in the iron factory. The next pivotal year, 1873. 
Bethlehem Iron begins making steel using the Bessemer process. The original foundry still stands on the former mill property. That is the last remaining Bessemer building in the world which actually has a claim and a very good claim to being the oldest. The steel became, quote, the arsenal of democracy. World War I, it was the single largest source of ammunition and guns for the Western Allies by the year 1917, 1918. Can you imagine in World War I when 20,000 people worked in that plant? In World War II, Eugene Grace, the steel's president at the time, promised President Franklin Roosevelt 1,000 warships for the war effort. So they produced more than 1,000. That goes everything from aircraft carriers, battleships, destroyers. The steel had also developed the H-beam, under Charles Schwab, who had acquired the company in 1903. The H-beam was the structural steel that enabled construction of skyscrapers. Bethlehem's steel also went into bridges, such as the Golden Gate in San Francisco and the George Washington in New York. And all that steel came from South Bethlehem. I found an interesting uh, note uh, produced or written by uh, Bethlehem Steel right around World War II, where they indicated that 58 nationalities were represented as workers at the steel. 58 nationalities. Um, and 10,500 were foreign born. So it was a big chunk of population. The Polish, Italians, Hungarians, the Czechs and Windish Hispanics and other ethnic groups all came to South Bethlehem. They established beautiful churches. They brought customs and created a melting pot as strong as the melting pots in the great furnaces along the Lehigh. What's interesting about the, the working neighborhood of uh, South Bethlehem is in its churches, 28 different churches at one time. So if there was a Greek population or um, a Mexican or an Italian, their churches represented where they, their proximity of residence was. Southside Bethlehem has retained many homes, churches, and other buildings from the late 19th and early 20th centuries. When these were built, they were uh, visually rectangular from street to attic but they were uh, finished off with cornices, unique to that particular building, and they're all different. South Bethlehem enjoyed a long period of growth, but when the steel plant shut down in 1995, it hit hard. The future looked dim, but the community faced the challenge, and today, the old mill property is a destination center with a casino, an arts and culture plaza, and historic preservation where once blast furnaces filled the air with smoke, now performers fill the air with music. It's a good start in the effort to restore prosperity to a community with a proud 150-year history. For Focus, I'm Grover Silcox reporting. Thank you, Grover. To continue this conversation, let's welcome Bethlehem Mayor Robert Donches. Thank you so much for being on Focus with us Thank today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Now, you actually grew up in South Bethlehem. I grew up three blocks from the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to believe. And our studio is actually located on the Steel Stacks right. campus, right at the base of those Bethlehem steel blast Correct. furnaces. That's right. Uh, there's so much pride that comes uh, from people who grew up in this community. Well, I think many of us who grew up in South Bethlehem, we really do have pride in South Bethlehem. I mean. Uh, when, you know, in the morning you would hear the blast furnaces, you know, making the loud noise and soot would come out of the, uh, the blast furnaces. Our window sills would be filled with uh, reddish soot. But that's, it was the pride of South Bethlehem, and, and South Bethlehem was a, a neighborhood of many diverse, neighbor, uh, diverse groups uh, from Hungarians to Polish to Italians, and all centered around the churches in South Bethlehem. And uh, it was a great place to, to really grow up and go to school. I went to elementary school at St. John Capistrano, which was located at 4th and Hay Street. And, uh, and many people that grew up in South Bethlehem and, and left South Bethlehem become very, very successful. Uh, District Attorney John Morganelli, uh, who's my closest friend, grew up one block from me 
on, on Evans Street. That's, I, I grew up on a 700 block of Evans Street, right across from those new townhouses. And if you would have told me we would have beautiful townhouses in South Bethlehem after looking at parking lots for 25 years, I never would believe it. So it's great to see South Bethlehem come back with a rebirth, a revitalization, and especially the Beth Works site where you're located at Steel Stacks and, uh, and the Sands Casino. It's, uh, it's just a, a great thing to see. Of course, they're celebrating their 150th or sesquicentennial anniversary Correct. this year. That's we right. have a lot of major anniversaries coming up in the community. Well, we do. We also have the city's birthday coming in to, uh, July 2016 through 2017. Uh, South Bethlehem, West Bethlehem, and North Bethlehem, the three boroughs merge into the city of Bethlehem. That will be uh, our 100th birthday. And then the founding of Bethlehem is, uh, is our 275th birthday, the same time frame. So uh, it's going to be an exciting three years, going, especially from 2016 through 2017. When we look at the community of South Bethlehem today, you talked about that ethnic diversity. Right, right. Uh, and it's still a very ethnically diverse. It really diverse. is. But it's, it's changed. You go from, you know, Hungarians and, and Windish and Slovaks, Italians and Germans. Now we see heavily Latino. And we also see uh, an increasing percentage of Asians that are moving into South Bethlehem. So, which is great. It's a new vitality, new group of ethnic people uh, bringing their culture and, uh, and diversity to South Bethlehem. And uh, also their culture and their businesses. And uh, we have the international block on the eight, 800 block of Ford Street with a lot of restaurants. So that's great for the city, great for South Bethlehem. And, uh, uh, hopefully with the Chris development that, you know, Bethlehem is one of the two cities selected by former Governor Corbett along with Lancaster to be a Chris city. Uh, that will lead to a lot of development along 3rd Street and 4th Street corridors that could bring more life and uh, people to uh, South Bethlehem. And we're about to learn more about the Chris, so will you stay with us after Absolutely. our next story? Absolutely. Love to. Thank you. Well, our next story takes us to one of the newest additions to the South Bethlehem menu, Social Still. The region's first craft distillery serves spirits made on site, and as Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo explains, it's made possible because of a new development incentive called Chris. Brittany? Thanks, Laura. Neighborhoods within Bethlehem City Revitalization and Improvement Zone, also known as CRIS, could see major developments over the next few decades. The 130-acre zone is designed to revive and redevelop parts of the city, and with the opening of its first business, it has many in good spirits. There's reason to raise a glass at the new social still in South Bethlehem. So vodka. In this one? Whiskey in this one. Yep. And, and this one's our gin basket. Adam Flat, co-owner of Franklin Hill Vineyards and his latest venture, The Social Still, serves up custom cocktails <laughs> through craft distilling. So everything starts here? Yep. This is the kettle. This is basically the engine of the entire process. We heat up the spirits and we allow it to vaporize and we collect the alcohol on the other side. Lit to mimic Bethlehem Steel's blast furnaces nearby, this restaurant and distillery is located on 3rd Street in South Bethlehem in the former Gastoni Savings and Trust Bank. So Adam, it really seems like you preserved the history of this old bank and trust. Yeah, we sure did. We kept the vault. Uh, we also repurposed our uh, safe deposit boxes for point of sale station and our hostess station. And inside this room, private dining experience? Sure. Yeah, people can reserve the, the vault room. When I first came in, it had drop ceilings, um, offices, cubicles, and the building was crumbling. And we've done an amazing restoration, preservation of the building and brought it back to its original glory. With restorations from flooring to crown molding, the social still serves both tapas and a taste of history. This building, oh my goodness, Jim and I worked at the Bethlehem Steel Corporation. So we go back to about 1964 and we used to come over here every payday to cash our checks. It's wonderful that what's going on here on the south side of Bethlehem and the revitalization and I'm very happy for the people who live in this area now. Flat says this project would not have been possible without Bethlehem's City Revitalization and Improvement Zone, also known as the CRIS. A statewide pilot program approved for Bethlehem in 2013, the CRIS allows certain state and local taxes collected within the zone to be used to repay debt associated with the projects. It's designed to accelerate projects in the city of Bethlehem. We have several projects that are um, long-standing, slated for development, but hadn't necessarily gotten off the ground and so it will help to expedite the development on those sites. Alicia miller Carner is the Director of Community and Economic Development for the City of Bethlehem and oversees CRIS projects. The zone is all over the city. There are acres in Lehigh County, which is West Bethlehem portion, in the north side of Bethlehem and in the south side. We also have some acreage, about 35 acres, in the industrial area. There's 130 acres in the CRIS. This is the south side where the largest concentration of parcels are in the city. 
Uh, we have the 378 corridor parcels. We have a number of uh, sites in the traditional downtown between 3rd and 4th Street. And then we have the Bethlehem Steel site. This is the locations of Greenway Commons and the Social Still. Carner anticipates the second CRIS project, tagged the Greenway Commons, will begin construction this spring. Greenway Commons will see the development of these first two sites, which will be retail and residential on the upper floors. And then the third site will be retail, commercial, and office space. Greenway Commons is going to be developed on, uh, in an area that hasn't had a building in 50 plus years. So there were structures on the site, and it's across from the community college along 3rd Street. It'll actually surround the social still. And so they'll see new life and new development in a block that hasn't seen development in a very long time. The Chris Zone is an economic incentive for the specific reuse of, of land and buildings, uh, and particularly buildings that would otherwise be very difficult to do on a straight market competitive basis. Don Cunningham, president and CEO of the Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation, says one of the sites included in Chris plans is Martin Tower, the 21 story office building located on the west side of Bethlehem, which served as the international headquarters for the Bethlehem Steel Corporation. It has been vacant since 2007. And there's proposals there for residential properties around the base of it and some reuses of the tower for office, for residential and for retail. That's kind of the big project that the Chris hopefully can um, incentivize to occur. It's got a lot of life safety issues. Asbestos has to be removed, sprinklers have to be put in. So having an economic development incentive to help a developer try to get it done uh, is critical. Cunningham says Bethlehem residents shouldn't expect the building bonanza of downtown Allentown's neighborhood improvement zone, also known as the NIDS. People in Bethlehem shouldn't expect this uh, explosion that you see in Allentown where there are all of a sudden four, five, six buildings coming out of the ground in 18 months. It, it's just not the same economic incentive. This is a 30-year designation, so we have the opportunity to collect the taxes for all 30 years. It's hard to predict what's going to happen 15 years from now, but I would expect that the next 10 years are going to see significant activity in the Chris. You know, you're talking about 130 acres of land, harder to develop infill parcels. You know, it'll be a decade's worth of growth and, uh, and job creation. Carner expects to see more than 5,000 jobs associated with the Chris, but says there are still a lot of unknowns. As far as what to expect for 2015, we can expect a lot of construction. With construction sometimes comes headaches, <laughs> but that's short-term pain for long-term gain. So I expect we'll see additional development, lots of new space, lots of new living opportunities, new dining opportunities, new businesses. It's, it's extraordinary that a city of 75, 80,000 people would transform economically this quickly out of a heavy industrial base into this mixed use, vibrant economy and drawing people and young people uh, back into the city. I think it's the next revolution here in, in Bethlehem. We just happen to be first, but there's a lot of great things to come. With 15 employees and more than a million dollar investment between Flat and his developer, perhaps the social still is just a taste of what's to come. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo reporting. To learn more about the Chris, you can visit Bethlehem-PA.gov, click on Departments and Community and Economic Development for more information. Mayor Donchez, you said you'd stick around to tell us yes. more about the Chris. Right. Now you said uh, we're one of only two communities approved for this very specific incentive. Uh, that's correct. Governor Corbett designated uh, the city of Lancaster and the city of Bethlehem as the two Chris cities with populations over 30,000 in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So the only other city that ha is a Chris designated city would be Lancaster. And uh, we saw in that piece that we shouldn't expect things to happen overnight. Correct. We shouldn't expect these major Correct. changes, but what is coming next? Well, I think that first of all, the first year, uh, we just finished the first year of, of being a Chris designated city, was setting up the logistics, setting up an authority, setting up the uh, the, gui the guidelines, the rules and regulations, and also Harrisburg gave us the guidelines. So it's really been a lot of logistics the first year. But Social Still was our first project and very successful. We have a project, Greenway Commons, uh, Mike Perucci's project, that is probably will be the second uh, Chris designated project. But we have 130 acres uh, that would be designated as a Chris. Martin Towers, for example, is 53 acres. Uh, Mr. Benner's project at 3rd and uh, New Street. Uh, fourth and New Street. He has some uh, property there that's in the Chris. 
Uh, the Beth Work site, part of the Beth Work site is part of the, uh, the Chris. So we have 130 acres throughout the city rather than one concentrated area, which is a little bit different. Lancaster is focusing their Chris development all in their downtown in a very concentrated area. We have 130 acres, but we have some on the west side, north side, south side, and uh, needless to say, part of the Lehigh Valley Industrial Park number seven, the Majestic site is part of Chris. So hopefully over the next uh, few years, we'll see major development. I think it's really, it gives us the opportunity for major investment, especially in South Bethlehem, where we really need, uh, we need people, we need foot traffic. So if we're lucky and we have some major development along Third Street Corridor, Third and New Street, the Fourth Street Corridor, we will bring life and vitality back to South Bethlehem. And we really need a mixed use. We need offices, we need residential, and uh, you know, and, and that's so important here, because you just don't want people to be here eight to five. So residential component from five to eleven is very important. So you know, with office, retail, and residential, those three, is that's that's what what we really want to see in the development along Third Street and Fourth Street. Martin Towers is 53 acres out of 130 acres. So that's a major piece of prime real estate in the city. Most people don't realize that it's 53 acres, probably the largest undeveloped tract in the city, excluding LVIP seven and the Beth Works site. So uh, it's an exciting time and we have a lot of interest by different developers in developing uh, and investing in the city and uh, you know we're open for business. But the Criz isn't as lucrative as Allentown's NIS. It's a little more restrictive, uh, but there are tax incentives and uh, we could use certain taxes for investment into the uh, Criz designated properties. Before we learn more about exactly how it works, I wanted to sure. ask you uh, specifically about the Bass Pro shops that we've heard right. about, and actually it would be right here, we're a neighbor to us at right. the Steel Stacks property. Right. Uh, is that coming any closer to fruition? Well, Bass Pro is, is something that we're still uh, involved with, and uh, the Sands Casino is still negotiating with Bass Pro, and hopefully uh, it will come to fruition that we could make an, an announcement sometime in 2015. It would be in the number two shop, the old Bethlehem Steel number two shop, which is a little less than a third of a mile long. And, uh, but talks are still uh, taking place. So if I'm a developer, how right. do I get started to see if this is uh, an incentive that I can well, take Well, first of all, of. you could go to the city's webpage, and we will be unveiling a new webpage within the next few weeks. Uh, but you could definitely call the mayor's office or Alicia Carner, our, our excellent uh, director of community economic development. Uh, she has all the CRIS guidelines. They're on the city's webpage even today. And uh, if any developer would like to meet with the mayor or with Alicia Carner, we certainly will schedule a meeting as soon as possible. And what portion of the taxes are allowed to be used? Well, basically, it's very similar to Allentown's and this, but it excludes property real estate tax. We cannot use uh, real estate taxes for a development. So we're looking at, you know, liquor tax, we're looking at sales tax, personal income tax, uh, business privilege tax, and the local services tax. Those taxes would stay in the CRIS. Uh, development and, and be used for other development projects. Kind of like what we did in, in the Beth Works site where you're located. It's called the TIF district here. What we call the Arts and Entertainment District. TIF is 130 acres and, and for the last uh, t uh, 15 years or so all the taxes that the Sands have paid, real estate taxes, basically have been used to develop this property with the infrastructure, sidewalks, aesthetics and everything else. And uh, so it's basically the same format. Well, we hope to have you back soon. Love to. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mayor Donches, for participating in this episode of Focus. Thank you. You can see stories from this episode and others by connecting with us on social media. Find us at PBS39 on Facebook and YouTube and at PBS39 Channel on Twitter. And, of course, you can find us anytime at WLVT.org slash focus. And so, Grover, you mentioned that there was also a point in South Bethlehem's history in the 1960s where things didn't look as bright. That's right. Uh, urban blight caused by a mass exodus of younger people to the suburbs. And now that seems to be turning around. The young people come, are coming back. Uh, the older folks are coming back and revitalizing the city. And that's the hope. That's a trend that's happening right now as we speak. And uh, the other thing that I, I thought was interesting was the social still. I remember it uh, before it became the social still, and it was all offices and uh, uh, low ceiling, and now it's wide open. That was, that was wild. That's to, right. To that's that. what Adam said. They really preserved a lot of, uh, like, that crown molding, some of the floors in there. And it was really neat to see inside where they do the distilling and how it kind of mimics what it looks like over here at the Blast Furnaces where our studios are located. Um, it, and it's just, it's just really neat to see all the distilling that goes on, whether it's for the vodka, for the gin. Uh, it's really a neat thing to have in Bethlehem. And you said they're doing whiskey now and may add bourbon in the future? That's right.
All right. Thanks so much, Brittany. Thank you, Grover. You're welcome. And we'll continue to watch how South Bethlehem celebrates this anniversary throughout the year on Focus. We'll see you next week. Until then, remember to focus on what matters. Antiques Roadshow is swinging into action to discover the hidden treasures of the unsuspecting citizens of Gotham, Metropolis, New York City. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Tune in next time on Antiques Roadshow.